<laughs> There's a lot going on and we have a lot to cover. So I'll get right to it. You are going to be back in the Bay Area May 15th at Levi Stadium, which is the last place we got to see you a few yeah. years ago when you were on tour then. So it's like almost a full circle for us. Yes. Um, but very exciting. Your tour is kicking off. Are you are you stoked to get back at it? Yeah, very much so. We did some concerts a couple of the last couple of weeks in Central America, which was amazing. And then this is like the second bit. Yeah. Is it something like you feel, do you ever feel dusty or does it just come right back to you? Um, definitely we feel dusty. It's the same as comedy, right? You have to. Did you remember it. that I'm a comic? I, I was reminded. Oh, <laughs> good full Lord. Disclosure. But yeah, it's, um, it's like that, isn't it? You, you, yeah. It is in you and it is what you do, but it still takes a few days or weeks to get it rolling. But um, this time, I guess, because we had enough time, we actually rehearsed a lot, which is unusual for us. So it felt less creaky. Less creaky, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a muscle, right? You just keep working the muscle. Yeah, and there's all, you know, with each tour, there's new songs and new bits. And so it takes a while for everything to sort of settle in. But I think by the time we get to Levi's um, Stadium, it, it hopefully will be a bit smoother than it has been. <laughs> I was going to say the uh, the Coldplay live show is no slouch. I mean, I've, I've I've probably I think the only tour I missed was the X and Y, but I've seen that's all okay. That was that was the one to miss. That's, <laughs> thank you, thank you for saying that because I, it makes me feel better. But like I was thinking about this yesterday. It's like the first time I saw you guys, it was the Showbox in Seattle, and no uh, way, my, you were my, there. Yeah, well, dude, even better story. My wife was at your Fillmore show here in San Francisco on the same tour before we even knew each other. And she's in your no video. Way. Yeah, no, I'll have to wow. show you someday. It doesn't matter. But my boss told me, he goes, you got to go see these guys. They are going to be the next U2. How he knew that, I have no clue. But uh, I went to the show and, you know, it was cool. But, but you could tell you were a new band. And I, 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 I'm sorry, I don't mean to be offensive. That's not offensive. Not but offensive then, at all. But then I saw you at, at the, the Symphony Hall there in Seattle. And then progressively seeing more shows. And the last one we saw at a Sandy's Point was at Levi Stadium. You know, we all chatted backstage. And then, you know, my wife and I are huge fans. You have become Joseph in the Technicolor Dreamcoat. Like, you guys are like <laughs> Sergeant Peppers out there. The colors and the lights. And, yeah. and, and I got to put a plug in for the Levi's. You have to go to this show because between the confetti and the light up bracelets none of us had ever seen before that all lit up in harmony when you guys hit the beats like it's gonna make whatever you it's gonna wash away quarantine it's gonna wash away the pandemic when you go see a Coldplay show and that is hey, not lip service that's legit that's well I wish heart. we could put this on the poster more because this is like <laughs> I, I'm very passionate about it because oh that means a lot though man and thank you for coming to all those yeah shows and I mean first of all you two are still you two. No, I so. understand. We, we can't disparage you two. I understand. But, um, but uh, I think the more that we've embraced like the freedom of expression, mm -hmm. the the more fun it is to play live. And, and I think we we always felt that. But as time goes on and you get more confident and you get less worried about negativity, there's a certain freedom that just we we feel very lucky that this feeling of freedom has just kept increasing, and so. Now our shows, I think, are where we feel totally um, without restraint. Mm. Yeah. What a good feeling. Yeah, it's it, a lovely feeling. It's got to be so hard. I'm sure you witness like newer artists maybe going through struggles that you went through in the beginning where like they try to put you in a box or do this or do that. And to get to a point where you can finally say, no, this is my show. This is the way we want it. This is our vision. God, that must be like such a relief. Yeah. I mean, and what's what, well, to your point, there are sometimes artists coming through that reignite our passion for it. Uh, oh. I don't know if you know a Belgian artist called Stromae. Uh, S-T-R-O-M-A-E. To me, he's the best performer in the world right now, or one of them. And I, I do see how it's difficult for newer artists, but I also keep getting inspired by right. them. Or, he's not new. He's been around for a while, but yeah. That's really neat. So did, did the evolution of the live show come uh, piece by piece or, or literally during that Showbox show, you were like, gosh, I wish we could be a rainbow explosion right now, but we can't. 
Well, that's a great question. Later. I think it happens organically over time as, mm -hmm. as new songs arrive and as your life is changing and your approach to life is changing. And I think maybe some of our earlier shows were more on the bitter side of bittersweet and now they're maybe on more on the sweet side of bittersweet but there's still yeah. the other the other color is there and i think it's just been a natural evolution i think you mentioned these light up wristbands they were a huge turning point for us they were invented by this guy that had made sex toys up to that point and so he was really good with little batteries <laughs> and he invented these wristbands know that? Yeah, a few people. That's fascinating. Uh, and he approached us and said, I've invented these things. And we said, we will buy all of them. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and as a concert go, it was amazing. Literally, you've told everybody about it. And then in opportune moments during the show, they all lit up at once. We were all one being. One, it was, yeah. I, I can't even, you got to go to the show. Speaking of one being, so your tour is called Music of the Spheres, which is the same name of your album. Yeah. Uh, that is where the massive hit, My Universe, came from, which we still play, still in love with. I, I've read so many things where you said you didn't even know if you were ready for the, the, the effect of that song on the world. I mean, that's very sweet. I, I still feel like it's really a BTS's song, even though we did it for them. I don't know, it's, uh, but, I, but then now we're playing it live, I feel, I mean, I'm, I'm being a bit of an idiot here. I love that song and I love that collaboration, but I always feel like our songs aren't really hits. So oh. I, you're just tapping into a, a weird part of my psyche. So that's why my answer is all over the place. I well, you're an artist, right? Artist, it's never say. perfect. It's never complete. <laughs> yeah. Also, I want to say the song, My Universe, uh, which we, I remember when that came out and I was so excited as a person who just attended a UFO conference. Did you? I, I did. Wow. Uh, when I heard that song was being released in space, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Oh, that's a song called Higher Power. Let me just turn the phone off. Yes. I, get, oh, I thought I he was going to go answer here, the phone. Like random... I don't know who it's from. It's I okay. Chris that, Martin is very like popular, a, very popular. It's like a, no, no, it's a, it's like a spam number. If it's Bon, <laughs> if it's Bono, I'm not here. Okay, tell him I'm sorry. Well, Bono? Yeah, I'm not here. No, he's not here. <laughs> oh, so even you get spam calls. Yeah, all the every in this room they come through all the time. That's so annoying. That's why I feel like I should answer at some point and just <laughs> buy buy it, whatever they want to sell, I'll buy it. <laughs> So I don't forget, I want to thank you, too, for putting together those little mini quarantine concerts, the uh, the Together at Home that you did mm. during the pandemic, because that got us through a lot of dinners, man. Every night, I, every night I cook and the girls would turn on the iPad and there's Chris Martin on the piano. And when you did Fix You, there was like crying into the macaroni and cheese, man. Like, so thank you, because it, it meant a lot. And I probably, hey, thanks, man. Probably speaking so you and your wife have kids. We have one seven-year-old daughter. She just started on the piano. So if you got oh, any kids, great. yeah, she loves it. She loves it. Well, maybe uh, if she wants to come to the concert, she's very invited. I appreciate that. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure for that to be her first concert would be amazing. But uh, I, I wanted to thank you for the, for the together at home, that whole thing. How did that come about? Did you just, was it a creative outlet situation or? Well, it's a really good question. We, right at the beginning of the pandemic, we had this idea of like, let's just do some songs online. And then we worked with a group called Global Citizen. And they said, can you do it? But then can you ask someone else to do it the next day? So that's how it started this kind of mm -hmm. chain of, and we weren't the only right, artists wanting to do that. There was loads of us, everyone really. So um, I don't know, it, it feels like uh, social media is, really amazing at that kind of thing. That's why social media is just wonderful in terms of direct access or real intimacy. And it's as fun for performers, I think, as it is for audience. Mm. But isn't it nice that concerts are back? Don't you feel back now? Yeah, although in truth, I, I feel like a sort of extra gratitude and a certain extra fragility about it. You're not quite sure like until it's actually happening. Mm -hmm can't really take it for granted right i think that's a healthy way to look at it. i think we're all kind of so like too. tiptoeing in yeah i think it's probably how like zen people would approach life like you just have this moment and any other moment could be taken away so give it everything so yeah. be in the moment more than just physically i like it um one of the big things we're talking about the evolution of your tour one of the big things on this tour is the sustainability 
uh, trying to be as low on the carbon footprint as possible. I love the idea of the electricity generating bikes. Is this legitimately like the fans are going to be able to jump on the bikes? Yep, there's a bunch of bikes. And also, is, go on. Is that required to power the show? Like if no, if everybody's drinking and nobody wants to pedal, the show ends in 10 minutes? Or how, what's the... If no one pedaled and no one jumped on these kinetic floors, one part of the show wouldn't work, for okay. sure. Okay, so know and the then, assignment. Whoa, yeah. Chris Martin's putting us to work. Well, but not it's not everybody. Like, if let's say there's 60,000 people in a concert, about 200 people need to work. Okay. So, <laughs> it's, it's Marcus, okay. you and I are not going to be in that room. I'm a union man. No, I can't. <laughs> not, not on the weekends. If you just want to come and sit and eat popcorn, that's totally cool. Perfect. There's no obligation to uh, power the show. And and the other thing I love is these wristbands we're talking about. They're 100 percent compostable. The confetti is 100 percent compostable. If you could have your person develop some compostable glitter for my daughter who loves to create things, that would be amazing as well. I would love yeah, that. That's a great point. What is glitter made from? Uh, little pieces of, of foil, I think. Unicorn it, tears. Yo, that's oh, right. Yeah. Unicorn tears. My bad. That's, that's, that's my mistake. You're right, Sam. That's absolutely correct. But it's Can't one of the most that. it's one of the most invasive things on planet Earth. I think uh, you know, uh, uh, glitter and chia seeds. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there's a beauty to glitter because even when you see it or find some of it three days on, it still gives you a little lift. <laughs> I know. Or you see someone with a bit still in their eyes. You're like, you must have had a great time yesterday. Yeah. Everybody who has glitter on them has a story. Exactly. That's a yeah. good way of looking at it. Like, <laughs> let, what is your glitter story? What is your glitter story? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that could be a social campaign after your uh, after your concert. Sounds like a TikTok thing. It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Well, we're excited to see you. May fifteenth is the date you're going to be here uh, in the Bay Area at Levi Stadium. The tour kicks off, I think, May sixth. Mm -hmm, that's right. Uh, which is God. That is in like two weeks. So uh, things are happening. Yes, I'm just grateful to be at work. Yeah. Agreed. I think that's the uh, same for all of us, dude. We really appreciate your time, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, so I love much. talking to you and you're very invited to the show. And thank you, anyone who's coming. We'd Absolutely. love to see you. Don't all right, guys. Thanks. Thank care. you again. Take care.